Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a primitive fishing rig. That's the line, the hook, the pole, everything out of forage materials down here in South Texas. And then we'll see what we can catch here in this creek. Now ideally if you find yourself in a survival situation, you've got some sort of survival fishing gear with you. Maybe a kit, uh, me myself, I keep hooks and line inside of my EDC bracelet here. But uh, that can wear out, I might not be wearing it, or it can break. And in those cases, being able to make this stuff from scratch can really get you by in a bind. So the first material that we're going to be collecting is going to be utilized as the fishing line. And this is from a yucca. It's yucca with two C's. Now this plant is native to the south. It's handy for quite a few things. Uh, soap, food at times, and uh, a lot of cordage can be made out of these leaves. I'm going to go ahead and cut this. I usually, the cordage I make, is going to be about eighth inch to quarter inch cordage. But, give it a little bit of refinement, and a little bit of practice, I can get it down to about the size of bank line. So, uh, pretty powerful stuff, and very versatile. So, uh, one of the tips I'd give you, is that if you can find a yucca that's underneath a little bit of uh, shade, got some trees over the top, you're going to find the longest leaves. The longer the leaves, the easier it is to make rope. Arguably, the most important part of this fishing rig is going to be the hooks. We're going to be making that out of agave. This is one from the Davis Mountains of West Texas. I propagated it specifically for the actual hooks that you see along the sides. And I'll show you how to actually take that off in just a moment. But uh, aside from hooks, you can also eat these guys, which is pretty awesome. I'll show you that some other time. So thus far we picked up two of the three materials we'll need to build this fishing rig. We've got our yucca leaf, and we'll be making that into our fishing line here in just a moment. We also have our agave leaf, and along the sides, once more, we have all the hooks. Different sizes, different shapes. We'll show you how to pull those off and integrate those into the line here in just a moment. Uh, lastly, we have a pole. We'll probably pick that up on site, as you don't want to be carrying around something that long and bulky uh, most of the day. So let's go ahead and get our line ready. We're going to be processing down this yucca. It's a fairly simple thing. Grab onto the sharp end of the yucca. We're going to start beating the end that we've cut onto something blunt. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a log, a rock will work, just about anything you can find will do. The idea is we're going to start unbraiding this. Uh, we'll start fraying it out more and more as we hit it. We'll start bringing it down, stripping it like this. Eventually, it'll start looking like a cat of nine tail whip. Uh, you'll just keep on hitting it. The idea is every time you go back and strip it down a little bit further, you're getting those strands smaller and smaller. And you want to process this down until it is just strings, uh, tiny threads. Uh, once you've got that down to threads, I'll show you how to weave it together and make a really good stout cordage. Alright, so take a look at these tips. That's going to start looking like a paintbrush. Now uh, with some of the cordage, eighth inch, quarter inch, you can cut some corners and uh, you don't have to process this down as small or get it as fine. But with this uh, fishing line, we want a very thin fishing line, you're going to have to take some time. So expect about 30 minutes to be taken to get uh, enough of this brought down and rendered down thin enough where we can use it. So take your time. So this is what it starts to look like after another five to ten minutes of processing and you can really tell that those individual strands are starting to separate and break free. Now at this point I can actually start to grab onto those tiny little threads and start pulling them down in order to separate them from the leaf. And that's the idea. And you want to go ahead and pull the smallest pieces possible. You want to start out with a good material. If you do that, most of the time you're going to have a really good product when you finish out. Now the real trick is pulling this thing down, stripping all the way to the end, and getting the longest thread possible. As a lot of times that thread is going to break before it gets too far down the leaf. Now as long as that is uh, at least two-thirds the length of the leaf, it'll be doing really, really well. 
and check that out. Again, this is going to be braided into uh, pretty much cordage the diameter of bank line. So it's already fairly strong. You see it's got some good tensile strength on it. I've got a pretty good length on it. And that's the idea. Again, good material, good product. This is going to take some more time, but it is well worth it. Now a leaf this size is going to be capable of making upwards of 50, 60 foot of line this diameter. And uh, we're not going to be needing anywhere near that amount, especially with the pole that we're using. And that's a good thing because it would take hours and hours to process down this leaf uh, to that level. But uh, it takes some more time. You'll probably need about 60 of these to get this project done. So, uh, patience. So this is the bundle of fibers that we have, and we'll be twisting this together in order to make our fishing line here in just a moment. Now before we begin that project, I want to go ahead and pull a hook or two out of this agave leaf. And the idea is that I'll integrate the hook into that line as I build it. It makes the first hook in the line a lot easier uh, in the long run. Now you will be able to change out hooks here and there, but uh, it becomes a little bit more complicated if you do it that way. Now take a look at the edge of this agave leaf, uh, highly serrated. Some of these are barbs and some of them would make really good fishing hooks and that's why we're messing with this right now. Now depending on what kind of fish and what size fish you're looking at, these hooks usually work out really well. Now if I'm going to choose this hook right here, with this method, I'm going to have to cut in underneath the hook, cut back and up. And what that's going to allow me to do is to have this entire area, this shank, uh, where I can actually tie on with my line as you're not going to have the regular eyelet like a conventional hook to tie your fishing line onto and that's the idea and you will want to make several of these hooks uh, look around choose the right one uh, you don't always have to take the entire leaf but if you're going to be fishing for keeps it's easier just to take an entire leaf because uh, there's your whole tackle box and if you fish quite a bit you know that you lose a hook every once in a while. This is an easy way to uh, keep hold of them. So let's go ahead and see what we can do about pulling some hooks off and getting this line started. doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to work. Got a pretty good hook here. It's time to go ahead and start making our line. Start out with a few of the strands. Real thin ones different sizes work out really well. You're going to want at least three of them to begin with. Try and get to about the uh, middle, approximate of those strands. Put your hook up to it. And this is going to be the top portion, the tie-on of the hook. You're going to wrap it around. Your strands have been out for a while, you might actually have to wet them down. But I can go ahead and put a knot. It's a simple overhand to make sure that that doesn't come undone. Just like that. Okay. So my hook's attached. It should all be a good go. Alright, from here. We start to twist. This is going to be a, a standard two strand twist. And I'll show you how to add on uh, more of these strands in just a moment. What you're going to do is take the one clump of strands closest to you and you're going to twist to the inside. You're then going to take the far set of strands, throw it over the top, grab a hold of it, and again twist to the inside. 
each time you're locking it off. Again, I brought that out opposite end, brought it over the top towards me, twist the inside, flip it, twist it, flip it, twist it. And you just keep on going with it. Now, uh, the practice comes down and you'll get faster at it. Also, whenever you're messing with uh, anything that's this thin, you're going to have to work really hard at keeping the diameter of this strand constant. So once you start getting to the end, uh, maybe one of your shorter threads, you're going to want to integrate in another strand immediately. Uh, you don't want to make this fishing line thinner or weaker than it needs to be. And you don't want to make it uh, any thicker or you know, bulkier than it needs to be. So it's going to be lots and lots of practice in order to get it just right. So right here, I haven't really got to the point where I'm uh, making it any thinner just yet, but I don't want to risk it. Okay, I've got some real good thin line to start out with. So, find yourself another strand. Again, kind of approximate the middle. What I'm going to do is stick that middle right there between the two. And so, this leg of it is now going to be part of this strand. The other leg is going to be part of that strand. So I just twist it in. And I keep on going as I did before. And uh, by incorporating additional strands in every once in a while, you'll continue to lengthen your piece of cordage. This ought to be enough line. Go ahead and tie off this end. Now, the better fishing pole you have, the longer the fish pole you have, the less line you need. And uh, once you start making this, you find out that it really, really sinks a lot of your time. So uh, a pole is a must. Although if you really wanted to, you could just get the line and hand fish. Uh, there you go. Line and hook. All we have left is to go get a pole, find some worms, get some fish. So admittedly, I did not have cane poles when I was in the desert mountains of West Texas. Cleaned up makes a heck of a fishing pole. So we're taking the next half hour to allow our fishing line to rinse down here in the creek. Now if you remember that fishing line is made out of yucca leaves. And yucca leaves contain saponins and a bunch of other chemical compounds that don't taste or smell good to fish. Not at all. So the more residue you can get off of those, the better luck, the better chances you have of actually catching fish. Now while we're waiting for that to rinse off, I've gone ahead and made a primitive bobber out of cane. I've sawed above a segment and below a segment. And what that does it makes this entire tube right here a vessel that is mostly air and water tight. So wherever you see a segment on a piece of cane, if you look down through that tube, you're going to see that it is plugged, and that's natural. So segments are plugs, pretty much just a wall of wood, and that allows us to have that vessel. Now up here, I saw it a little bit higher, and I've drilled a hole, and that's where I'd have fixed my fishing line onto the bobber. Works out pretty well. Now I've done a few other primitive bobbers, sometimes made out of dried gourds tying onto the husk. I've used uh, an old dead raccoon leg. Uh, the leg bone worked out pretty well, for a little while at least. But uh, really and truly, what you should get out of this is that if you're going to go out and you're going to play a survival game, uh, you want to be prepared and bring yourself a 
fishing kit. Uh, even if it's an emergency fishing kit, it will be better than nothing. Now on top of bobbers, you also want to have something for weights. This allows your line to get down where it needs to go. I've used rocks in the past, uh, little ones with holes in them. If you're in an area you can find those, use them. Uh, long skinny rocks I can tie on to, those work as well. Uh, in this area, I have clamshells. So if I dig around in the uh, clay and gravel for a little while, I'll start to find clamshells. And those work out really well. So if I take one of the dead ones, just like this, and I take a little while with a sharp, sharp knife, I can whittle a hole right through it. And it's uh, not much weight to it, kind of like a little slip shot, but you can add as many of these to your line as you need. It works out really well. Also, if you find the dead shells, dig around for a little bit longer, and you ought to find the live clams. And what you can do with those is actually open them up and take your sharp knife and go down through, through the crease. You're going to find out that clams are mostly muscle in there, and that can be a source of bait, and it works out pretty well. Although these guys are going to get to live today. I'll put them back because I've already dug up some worms. But uh, clams are pretty useful. And uh, if you really suck at fishing, you can always spend half a day collecting the clams and make a meal out of that. So uh, always have a fallback. But again, be prepared. Pack yourself a fishing kit. Well, this is the spot. All I have left to do now is to secure my line to my pole. And I've collected some worms. Uh, use whatever bait works best for the area that you find yourself in. Uh, whatever bait you can get your hands on. So flip some logs, roll over some rocks, dig around a little bit in the dirt. You usually find something a creature likes to eat. Keep it simple at first. Now eventually I will be showing y'all some of the more advanced hooks. Uh, some of the larger stuff capable of catching some uh, pretty good, pretty large bear. But right now, again, keeping it simple. That's the main idea here. Okay. Right. Now, one of the interesting things that you're going to have to do with a hook like this is that uh, it has no barb. It's like a catch and release hook. So you're not going to be able to just keep the fish on there once you set the hook. A lot of times, I'll actually have to pop the fish out of the water and get it on bank. So uh, it adds a level of skill to fishing that you otherwise would not have with conventional hooks that have barbs on them. So it might take a little bit of practice. Uh, some of these fish will have just the right mouth size where it will get caught inside the mouth. So uh, you'll definitely have those fish. Uh, right now I'm putting a worm onto my hook. Sorry guys, that's what fish eat and they like it. This is the part where cross our fingers and see how we do. So, wish us luck. Let's see how we do. All right, our line is securely affixed to the end of our pole. Our worm is on our hook. All that's left is to see if our fish will actually go and bite. Swing it out there. Let that hook and worm go down. And we'll just have to see. There we go. There's one. <laughs> Worm number four, though. All right. All right. Yeah. So this is an issue I've been having. It actually ended up with uh, one of my hooks getting broken. So check that out. That is a red swamp crawfish, and several times now, they've drug it into their little holes. We've got holes under the water, and it makes it really difficult to pull the hook out. It gets stuck, and they also tear the worm right on off. And as you can see, they don't let go. Hardly at all. Sometimes when you put them on the ground, they'll let go. But, uh... 
I don't know. Trade a worm for a crawdad. Not a bad trade. There it goes, son. Huh? See, there you go. That's a medium sized crawfish. That'll work. I'll make that trade. Look at that. Got another visitor here on my right. It's a water snake. Banded water snake. And hopefully, hopefully he thinks I'm a friend, or at least not potential food, because he's got his head right up next to me, and he's smelling me right now. I kind of want to share the waters. Back up, son. You're a little too curious, but uh, check it out. They are not afraid of me at all. Here this creatures. I might try and show this in just a moment, but if you can catch small fish and you've got enough of these water snakes around, you can actually rig up your pole and a small fish to catch an even larger water snake. And that's the game when you're surviving. If you can trade something small out for something even bigger, go for it. So take a look. We've had to do a little bit of repair on this hook and expect to have to change them around, repair them, and switch them out. But pulling the hook out of one of the crawfish holes actually ripped off the barb that was down here. That was my primary hook. Now I designed the system so that once this broke off, you can come back here and trim a little higher and use the next barb up. And that works out pretty well. But before going and resorting to that, I've taken some thorns off of a mesquite branch. Any kind of thorns will work, but I've pushed the thorn up through what's left of the agave leaf and I've got a hook back. Uh, you might also notice that I've lost a lot of the integrity at the back of this hook so once I start pulling it lets go of the fish. Now to actually balance that out and I've just been pushing the mesquite thorns into my brim of my hat. What I'll do is since that one's coming out that way I want to balance it out with a thorn going the opposite way. So I'll push that up and through and I want to get a pretty good angle. That's not the best angle I could ever get on it. But one way or another, if a fish comes up there, and now they've got to be large enough to grab on, um, you're looking at a pretty tight fit. But this is effectively a gouge hook. All right. So not the best it could be, but uh, it is what it is. As far as quick hooks, uh, this is uh, pretty fast. I'll have to show you some of the other ones that I can build. Uh, some of the cat claws uh, used for panfish works pretty well. Uh, some of the multi-piece hooks that uh, you can catch larger fish with, and they're pretty pretty substantial. They take a little bit more time. And of course, I've got some bone hooks uh, that you can carve, or uh, even the ones I like, which are made out of armadillo or turtle legs, which uh, have a pretty interesting feature on them that allow you to make a uh, pretty awesome hook. But, you know, you're, you're racing time. If you can catch small fish using a rig like this, go for it. Alright. Let's try not to feed one more fish. Come here. He swallowed it. Good. Well, that's not a keeper, but if you're surviving, that would be a meal. It's pretty. It's too hot in this water. I didn't see it, I blinked, but the fish went flying. So that's your little bass. And uh creeks that way. Let's see how far he flew. Go bass. Well the hooks lasted pretty well up to this point. Now I've had to go ahead and trim that last section off. And I'm down to my second to the last hook. And uh this has worked really, really well having a thorn in the back side being able to have a secondary hook to kind of push upon and uh, feed off of. So 
So you want to adapt as you go and use what works. So right there, that's been working. So I didn't really intend on catching as many bass as we have. But for every fish you have seen me pull out, I probably lost 10 of them. Yanked them out of the water and they've fallen back in. So, see how long that'll work. All right, so real quick, check it out. Catch the day. I did not expect to get anything this large. Not sure what he is, but uh, you never really can tell what's gonna come up from the river whenever it floods. So we'll put that back. Y'all ID him. And uh, I'm done, at least for this part, because uh, it's gonna be a little hard to top that one. Well guys, hopefully you've learned a few things. Now depending on where you find yourself, whether that's a survival situation or you're just out honing your bushcrafting skills, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to have the same resources that you've seen me use here today. Now in those instances, you need to be able to improvise, looking around at the trees, the rocks, maybe even some of the animals in the immediate area, and be able to utilize them in different ways to find your way around it. It's all about problem solving. Now whether you're going to be fishing, or even if you have a creek, stream, or river suitable for fishing, uh, you need to be able to make those decisions. You might actually go towards a path of setting traps. Fish traps work really well. Or maybe even hunting the creatures that come after the fish. But uh, most of survival is being able to tinker and try lots of things, having lots of options until you find one that works. And uh, that's the best piece of advice I can give you. Now that is a very simple, simple hook. And uh, if my eyes are going to get better, we're still having issues, <clears throat> lots of issues, uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you some of the more intricate ones where I put uh, the two barbs back to back and do some cool little knots, uh, some of the larger hooks. I mentioned uh, various leg bones and things like that. You can make some absolutely fantastic hooks, but for a quick fix, this will get you by. So uh, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, subscribe. And as always, until next time.